Hello everybody, Christy Rice here. Today I am going to show you about sketching. And this is something that I've been asked to do many times. So I'm actually pretty excited to finally be able to show you. This is one of my favorite pencils, uh, Zebra. It's a 0.5, a mechanical pencil. I will have that information for you in um, the descriptions at the bottom it does come with a cute little eraser I usually just take the top off the minute I receive a new pack and throw it away so how in the world do you get started sketching and here is what I do when I'm just not feeling terribly inspired or I just need a little lift is I will take my inspiration image and I often work from inspiration images if I don't have the flowers that I want to draw fresh and I will kind of just go around the edges, basically tracing around the image, um, just to get myself loosened up, just to get my hand accustomed to the scene, the petals, the ins and outs, the curves. Um, it, this is a great exercise. It's very unorthodox, but it's just a great thing to do to just loosen up. Um, and you're not going to use this. You're not going to trace this on to your paper. You're not going to do anything like that. It is literally a way to loosen up and get yourself started for actually sketching on your watercolor paper. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here with my reference image on the left. And this is also something I do. Now, this is a technique that I use all the time when I'm sketching. I will kind of map out the main flowers using ovals and circles. Um, just to get the general lay of the land, so to speak. Where's this flower in relationship to that? Is it more of a horizontal oval or more of a vertical? Now look, I am not about to show you how to draw super realistic, don't get me wrong. But there's something very satisfying, even if you're more of an expressive illustrator or sketcher, not super realistic, there's something super satisfying about just having control of your layout and knowing what's coming next. So I've started, I often start, as you know, with painting at the center of a flower. I am very much the same with sketching. Um, I keep my hand loose. I tend to not move my wrist, but my whole arm when I sketch. And that is something that takes a little getting used to. Um, and I just keep looking back and forth at my page and at the inspiration photo. And I make quick decisions about shapes. Think of your shapes, um, especially on peonies. There's a lot of teardrops upside down, right side up. Some peony leaves are curved at the end, some are pointed. Um, these are things you can be asking yourself as you're sketching. Well, this first flower I'm sketching here, I'm thinking, okay, it's got a ruffly center but the ruffles are kind of pointed, and then the outer petals are very big and floppy. And what shapes, what, what way do I hold my pencil to make those shapes? Um, it, this is not something you're gonna figure out and learn overnight, but this is something that takes a tremendous amount of practice. Um, and you will practice, you'll have moments that you absolutely love what you've put down on paper, and then you'll have moments that you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's not what I was after. Something to keep in mind, again, I am not here to show you super realistic sketching. I am here to show you a style of sketching that is going to give you kind of this breezy, effortless look when you're done. I moved on to the peony here, and I'm just paying attention to how these little cup shaped, think of like a teacup. Each of these petals on this peony kind of have a resemblance to a teacup shape that's kind of squashed a bit. And I'm just looking at how they overlap with one another, at what points do they overlap with one another. I'm paying attention to things like where does the center of the peony, all that little, those little yellow bits, where do they stop and start in reference to the other petals? See, the thing with sketching, it's more important with sketching is seeing, especially if you want to create something that's somewhat recognizable. Um, the painting techniques that are very popular right now, there's no sketching involved. Typically, um, people go right to the paper with the brush. 
this kind of sketching is a little more structured um, and a little bit more, <clears throat> how do I wanna say this? It gives you a little bit more of an outline look, so to speak, okay? Um, but I don't want you to approach it from a very formulaic type of stance. I want you to approach it from, I'm creating this scene, this bouquet, this arrangement, if you're doing landscapes, this landscape based on an inspiration image. And I want it to look kind of like what that image looks like, but I'm not going to be hard on myself if it doesn't look exactly like it. For example, these leaves I'm adding right now don't really exist in my inspiration image, but I kind of feel like I wanted to do leaves. So literally, I'm just going to go ahead and do some leaves. I'm going to add some up here. Uh, again, having a comfort level with creating uh, leaves on stems, creating those small areas of the stem takes time. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you some exercises that you can use to get yourself a little more comfortable with that. Now I'm re-examining my page here and what I've done and what I have yet to do. Keep your inspiration page nearby. I would strongly recommend when you're, if you've never sketched much before, I would strongly recommend working from an image and not working from life. And I know that some people would just be appalled at me saying that, but here's why. Uh, when you're sketching from life, there's so much more to distract you. Uh, there's there's just so much more to kind of mess with your your perception in, in terms of um, proportion and size and without getting too technical. You're, it's just so much more intense to try to create something from life than it is to create something and sketch something from a flat piece of paper. Um, you'll be a lot less distracted. And the images on a flat piece of paper aren't gonna change over time. You'll be able to come back to it the next day and it's gonna look exactly the same. So my opinion is do yourself a favor and, and make things a little bit more enjoyable for yourself in the beginning when you're just starting out sketching. So more things you can think about as you're sketching. Right now I'm doing a ranunculus. A ranunculus is literally a bunch of thin tissue paper, thin petals smushed together, um, somewhat similar to a rose, but more closed, more tight. And so think about how you would make that ranunculus appear a little bit more realistic. Basically, I went around, again, starting with the center of the flower and continue to create little um, half moon shapes that are centering around that flower's middle. And I kept creating those shapes again and again, around and around, making sure not to stack them on top of one another. Uh, that is a mistake a lot of people make in the beginning. You want your flower petals of any kind to overlap one another like bricks would, not one on top of another perfectly. Just continuing on, sketching these little bits, um, I am working on a poppy right now. I believe that's what's in my inspiration image. And guys, by the way, the inspiration image is from bows and arrows, flowers. You need to follow them on Instagram. I will put it in the information below. They are fantastic for inspiration. A couple of more things to think about as you're sketching. And I know at this point, you're probably freaking out a little bit. You're probably like, Christy, I, I don't get it. I, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I don't understand what you're saying. This is so much, this is so much. It's okay. You're allowed to feel that way. You may wanna watch this a couple times. Something to think about is direction. When you're trying to sketch something, when you have a flower, okay, you've established where the center is at. You do that by making your little circles at the very beginning like I showed you just a few minutes ago. Think about Okay, there's six, seven, eight petals, whatever it may be. What direction is each petal going in? Is one petal facing up to the left? And is another petal facing the complete opposite? Or are they all kind of pointing downwards? Um, I'm looking at that peony in the upper left-hand corner. I'm not drawing on that peony right now, but look at that peony 
And look at how all those petals are centering around the middle of the flower, obviously, but they're all kind of pointed to the left and upwards a little bit. Those kind of thoughts will, as you think them more and more, as you train your brain and your eye to work together and think and see in that way, directionally, over time you will notice yourself being able to take that information that you're seeing and that you're thinking and really apply it to what you're sketching. I'm working on some really floppy flowers here, for lack of a better word, and see how thin those stems are, and I know that that stresses you out. Um, again, I'm gonna show you some exercises to continue to build strength in your hand so you can have a nice steady hand when you're creating long, thin lines right next to each other. Just working on a really kind of scruffy looking rose um, from my inspiration image, it almost looks like a rose that maybe is starting to wither. Um, and I'm literally just making little wavy, scratchy lines around the flower center, adding in a few leaves. Great thing you can do for yourself too in regards to leaves is uh, practice filling a page, just a pencil and a piece of paper, practice filling a page with leaves all different shapes, all different sizes, all different levels of detail. And you'll basically build yourself up a pencil sketch arsenal of leaf shapes. I've recommended this for watercolor painting with just the brush, no sketching first, where you use one brush to kind of get the most out of it and create as many types of leaves that you can. Well, this is similar, except you're sketching. So I'd highly recommend doing that exercise so you can really figure out what type of leaves you like the look of best and how to create them consistently again and again. Something I love to do is create kind of these clusters of leaves that are twirling and swirling around one another. These leaves are not in my inspiration image, but I love this kind of look where these leaves just swirl and curl in and amongst each other. So I'm adding it, I'm adding it. I'm starting to feel like in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to need something. I'm still continuing on. There's another ranunculus down here. Um, I'm just adding three layers of petals in an upside down teacup shape. And don't be afraid to use that eraser. But I know that I feel that I'm gonna wanna go back to that bottom right corner and eventually add something there. Let me speak to you eraser marks a bit. Uh, people also, in my experience, tend to freak out about um, using their eraser because the lines don't erase nicely. When you're sketching, please don't press too hard so that you can go back and erase easily. Don't press too hard. Okay, we are into the exercise here now. I am just making thin lines right next to one another. I'm practicing essentially here is creating, um, practice creating branches. I've talked about muscle memory before and it has so much to do with um, your comfort level in painting and sketching. Exercises like these where you have to put um, lines next to each other, very, very close but not touching is excellent exercise for your hand. Here we go with some leaves. I am literally just, up. Oh, my point broke. I am literally just going super quick, keeping my arm loose. Remember, don't draw with your wrist, draw with your whole arm. And if you don't know what I mean by that, by all means, ask me in the comments below. I will help explain it further. So this exercise is fantastic. Remember, you're not trying to create something specific you are literally practicing. Thin, thin lines next to one another. I do the same, same technique when I'm practicing watercolor. Again, it just see how close you can get each line without overlapping. Do that in different directions. This is a great warm up before you start to sketch, fantastic. Uh, it's worth the time. Here I'm making kind of a curved line. Guys, this is hard but this will help you really get comfortable with making beautiful shapes for petals um, and even for leaves. This is hard. Close, close, close together, as close as you can get these lines together without touching. And also, 
Get them as close together as possible, but keep them equidistant. Equidistant, see, see, I didn't do it there. It's so hard. Equidistant, it's so hard, but it's so good for you to practice this way. Please, please try it. I love these, these little practice sessions. Um, same idea, just going vertically instead of horizontally. Again, how close can you get them? Can you keep them equidistant over and over and over again without touching? Challenge yourself. Now, I'll make a quick note. These marks that I'm making, these could become beautiful ways to create petals in and of themselves. If you like a lot of texture, create a petal instead of just creating an outline, create a petal out of a bunch of little marks. Hope you had fun with that. So everyone, this is going to be a two-part video. This is part one where we've sketched, obviously. And next time we'll be adding some watercolor. So hope you've enjoyed uh, this sketching demo and looking forward to hearing your comments and answering all your questions. Thanks so much.